And what better way to start any day than with a muffler man. And this is not just any muffler man, this is the, one of the rarest muffler men you will ever see. The Happy Halfwit, as they're called by Roadside America, also known as the, uh, as the Alfred E. Newman style. Also, there is a giant fiberglass giraffe there. Notice there is a plaque on the wall here. It says, love everything roadside? I do, I do. There's a ton more of that at the American Treasure Tour Museum. A giant shoe, sideshow banner, Santa Claus. I love all three of those things. Located at the opposite side of this building, I think we'll head over there right now. Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are on the other side of the building. Even more specifically than that, we are in Oaks, Pennsylvania. And even more specifically than that, we are here at the American Treasure Tour Museum. Now this is a collection of collections, a pop culture roadside collection that is uh, actually owned by a mysterious individual. The actual owner of this attraction, of this collection is anonymous, but it's someone's personal collection of uh, different collections, a, a menagerie of amazing things all collected. No one knows who the true owner is. He operate, he or she, operates this museum anonymously through uh, uh, through other people and I'm very very excited to check this out somehow I have managed not managed to make it out here yet this is actually my first time visiting the American Treasure Tour Museum so I don't know entirely what's in store for us but they have offered me a uh, private tour which I'm very excited about so please follow me Look at this, big empty space in here. Looks like this is our museum. Oh, okay. So we take the uh, elevator up to the top. Oh, look at this. American Treasure Tour presents the strangest creature. This uh, bunny here. Oh, look at this. They have the tram in here. Oh, wow. This is unbelievable. Yeah, the people here boarding the tram, ready for the tram ride. So, the collection's so big, you need a tram to, to view it all. Oh, look at this. A girl there. She is one of our animatronics. Does she work? She no. does. I'm not sure if she's working at the moment. Oh, uh, is she being sure. She's not going. All right, so she's taking a break today. <laughs> You'll see some that are. But pouring herself, pouring herself a little glass of uh, Moxie. Actually, my least, my least favorite soda, Moxie. We do have, we believe, one of the largest collections, if not the largest collection of automatic music in the world. But we can't confirm it because we can't count everybody else's collections. These machines date to anywhere from the 1890s to the 1930s. There we go. Got a close look here. The paper.
listen, listen for these instruments. Triangle there. He claims, or he claimed, he passed away a few years ago, but he claimed that the little um, bottle on the table right next to the ship is the smallest hand-blown bottle in the world. We can't really confirm it, but... Possibly the smallest hand-blown bottle in the world. Check this out. There's a peacock up there, the lights forming the tail. had this in his living room, his bedroom, his kitchen. When uh, we brought it here, he said it was the first time he actually saw his dining room table in about 20 years. Yeah, this is all made, all made by one man here. That's the different, different castles here. The different the different figures in there you've got Star Trek Tron some Star Wars over here there's a little can you find 40 of the greatest horror films? Can you find 40 of the greatest horror films in here yeah you can see the fly the creature from the black lagoon there there's uh, gizmo from gremlins so, yeah well, there's a little gremlin there as well yeah montage all these different horror characters. You can see uh, Frankenstein there. Who's up here in the uh, in the balcony? There's Dracula. On the understanding that it would stay together. So, all right. Look at this. This is the Raggedy Ann collection. So, a woman from Tampa did not want to break up her collection, so donated this to the museum with the understanding that it would all stay together. Look at this. A raggedy, raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy there in the sailor cap. Yeah, there's some larger dolls here on the bed. All right, so this is all it's another all person. One person's collection that they donated to us. Oh, that's really cool. And they cool. get to visit it whenever they want. So and this. they're sharing. That is cool, so yeah. If, if, Many people who have never seen rotary phones in use. Do you get a lot of people here that haven't seen rotary phones? We do. There was one young woman Oh, that makes came. me feel so old. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was one young woman, businesswoman, you know, very, very attractive. You could yeah. tell she was very educated, and she said, oh, I think my grandmother had one of these. Oh, so you're getting like adults, like full-on adults. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, it it's hurt. painful. <laughs> but yeah, one, one couple collected all these telephones. So they uh, donate it here, share it with other people, and sometimes they actually come and visit their old collections. So very cool that uh, this is almost like a collection of collections. People know that they can uh, donate their collections here and have them all stay together. A lot of interesting phones there. Yeah, phones used to be a lot of fun back in the, back in the day. Let's look at the Alpha there. Oh, look, it's, it's like all furry. Yeah, these were the coolest thing back in the 80s is these these phones where the character would actually hold hold the phone. There's the Cabbage Patch phone, Keebler Elf phone, that Kermit Snoopy. And this was a classic. A lot of people had the uh, the Mickey Mouse phones back then. There's the the Bozo Bozo phone. I think this character's name is Sprout. He's the I think the big green giant's uh, little buddy. Yeah, look at these. Oh, <laughs> the Gumby phone. It's amazing. Yeah, 
Oh, look at that. Magic, magic eight ball phone there. And this is a phone. That's a phone. Oh, it's a little, little 50s diner that is a phone. Oh, I remember this football phone. They used to like, there used to be like an infomercial where they would sell this on like our commercial where they, they, they'd like throw this in if you like bought a subscription to something. I just love is the Crest phone here. The Crest phone. I don't even remember this character, but is this the mascot for Crest? He probably was very short lived. <laughs> just a man made of toothpaste. <laughs> Oh, how does that how does that work? So you pick it up, you dial on the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Where do you even talk into? <laughs> it's a fair question. Oh, is that his oh, yeah. chest right there? there. It is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's easy. Charlie, Charlie the tuna back there, and then of course your Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus Rex phone. Rex phone. <laughs> a fuzzy, fuzzy phone there. Wow, this is yeah, this is this is pretty amazing. I definitely love the. Uh, phone collection here. Oh, who's this hiding in the phone booth over here? A wax figure. Do you know who this is, the wax figure? I don't, <laughs> but it does come from the Dutch Wonderland Wax Museum. Out oh, so this is from Dutch Wonderland. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, they don't have a wax museum there anymore at uh, at Dutch Wonderland. That's really cool. That's a, that's a piece of uh, of theme park history right there. Oh, listen to that. The sound is amazing. Box from the Regina Company out of Rowie, New Jersey. This is a pneumatic vacuum cleaner. Pneumatic and vacuum this, the cleaner. The hole, you push that to create the suction, and then another person would use the hose that's not attached to oh, wow. clean that's, things out. That sounds like a lot of work. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> when you actually had to put effort into cleaning your house. <laughs> Oh yeah, I like the little oh, yeah. little monkey there. Not sure this little guy. So these would be like a, a grinder that you play out in the street, like a street performer would uh, would bring out. And then maybe have like their monkey come and collect money afterwards. Yeah, actually <laughs> handmade, where people would work the farms during the day and work on these at night. was designed as a toy for kids in the 50s and it cost more than a used car would have so it was oh only for the wealthiest people and then the kids would ride the ponies or whatever so <laughs> the pony and the guy are extremely rare but you'll find the uh, parts every now and then you would crank it just like a regular street organ no it's it's called the maharaj's, maharaja's palace, palace. inspired by all of the different Indian palaces and whatnot. The woman who made it used styrofoam and things around the house, so it's very oh, yeah. creative. And most of it, you can't tell that it's flimsy until you actually look a little bit. <laughs> this little dollhouse right here. This was a home in Audubon. Audubon being the town right next to us. Yeah. So this is actually the family's home and they gave it to us and, because they didn't know what to do with it anymore and wanted to save it. And this one has the creepy back bedroom for the baby. Creepy if you think clowns are creepy, I should say. <laughs> All right, so this is a, f a photo player, so they would have these during silent films. They play the piano during the silent films, and they would actually have sound effect pedals. So if they needed to like make a horse clopping or things like that, they would hit that uh, lever on the bottom. So that's pretty amazing. I do the live soundtrack to the movie while it played. All right, so yeah, these are four-wheel Vespa cars. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, there's actually a, another Raggedy Ann driving the Vespa. All right, we are in the toy box here. And we can see uh, the tram tour. This used to be an old tire factory. I'm gonna take the tram to show people all the items here in the uh, in the toy box room. You can see Ark of the Covenant. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, so it is a full full size replica, and it was created by a company that had the design through uh, Paramount. Oh wow! And uh, so yeah, it came to us from a guy who worked with Paramount, I think, in finance. So actually, like, uses the same specifications as the one in the movie. Oh uh, yeah, you don't want to touch that. Yeah. So you see the model airplanes. We have about 300 model airplanes on display. 300 the model airplanes. Pretty close to anything you can imagine. These came to us from Queens, New York, and these are, this is one of the widescreen televisions from the early 70s. <laughs> that would have been the envy of the neighborhood. But this one is the very first nationally distributed beta player. Okay, that's so, And it's in great shape. The guy who collected these was obsessed with old electronics, and he passed away, and so we inherited it. Oh yeah, so much, so much to look at in here. It's amazing. The elephant on sombrero. So win more plush toys with our additional UFO catcher there. Oh, check out that lion. Oh uh, yeah, so again, so much, so much to look at. Yes. Yeah, you'll see the What is this here? Is a video a video disc player? Yep. Before laser disc. So this is pre-laser disc. Yep. Oh, that's wild. And the discs were so sensitive that they put them in the plastic containers because if you touched it, it was done forever, essentially. Yeah, they did not last very long, but they were, you had status back in the late 70s, <laughs> early 80s, you had one of those. Oh, look at these robots here. Yeah, I love the uh, cotton candy and the cotton uh, candy robot. robot. Yeah, look at this popcorn robot. He says, let me pop you some delicious fresh oh, popcorn. Oh, it's right here. It's uh, Orville Redenbacher oh, right popcorn there. Yes. there. You know Orville Redenbacher from the same town in Indiana? Looks like it would dispense that there. Really cool. This was also known as the kind of gangster car where they might stand on the side and shoot outside of the car or whatever, but we do have a bullet hole in this one that came with the car when it was added to the collection. Oh, wow, so, so this one has a, uh, it's a legit bullet hole in it. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Yes, some other cars back here. That's a car tour. Is it the, the Ford it? Model A here? Well, this this part here oh, yeah, is look at this. Just, you know, meander through it. It's right here. And look at this here. This uh it's like a, oh yeah, this would take coins at one point, so it's like a uh, animatronic organ grinder there. Look at his look at his little monkey friend. And they were eventually shut down because they were just luxury pieces. You never wanted to drive one of these on the road because they could be deadly. No, so this is so it's like it's got an it's got an engine. Oh yeah, but it just sits really low to the ground. Yeah. So this could be. It seems like you get run over really you, easily. You could. That's why they were mostly for recreational. <laughs> <laughs> you can still see things like these in some of the golf courses on the yeah. coast, but this is the fifth wheel where the motor is. Okay. On this one. They're all different. There are electric ones. I think I've seen these before. And, yeah. Red, bu red bugs are pretty unusual, but not quite so much as the uh, electric shoe. Got electric shoe there. Is that uh, George Washington maybe or <laughs> Thomas Jefferson there riding in the, in the shoe there? I think it was every founder's dream to ride in an electric shoe. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that creature back there. That is a rhinoceros okay. that used to be animatronic. But... It's an animatronic rhinoceros back there. That's wild. Do you know where that was from? Uh, I don't. It was probably from like a Chuck E. Cheesy place. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where most of those things were created for. What's Grover's Mill? Grover's Mill is a small part of Princeton, New Jersey. Yeah. But that's famous for being the place where the aliens invaded in the War of the Worlds. Oh, okay. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. yeah they have a nice monument for it. Okay. So they have welcome to Grover, Grover's Mill there with the alien. And uh, I'll look at the uh, that puppet there, like a genie of some sort. Just like one of my favorite pieces of the advertisement for Big Nuts Hardware. Oh, big Nuts Hardware, there's a big big nut on the sign. All the cars here. Oh, look who's lurking around here. We got Chuck E. Cheese himself. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> it's pretty cool.
Exactly. So the, sa the Stanley steamer. You said the car runs on water. Yep. That's crazy. It'd be cool if my car ran on water. Oh, yeah, like a little gunsmith cart there. Little guns. Giant cello here. And then look at these wax figures. You know where these wax figures are from? They're all from Dutch Wonderland. Okay, so all the wax figures are from the Dutch Wonderland Wax Museum. Yeah, and the only one we can say with certainty, John Kennedy is the very bad barber. So John Kennedy is the barber. This guy looks terrified. Well, look at his hand. He's got the razor in his hand. He does not look like he does not want John Kennedy going at his neck with that uh, with that razor. Wow. I look at these other guys. If anyone has any idea who these other figures might be, leave a comment in the comment section. So look at this. It's a map of the United States. And these are all tags from dogs from those different states. It's a dog license, a dog permit. A dog tax. Apparently you used to have to pay a tax on your dog or a fee for your dog. This is something I've never, never heard of before. Wow. And then next to that we got this uh, big Disneyland map here. Yeah, I don't know what era this is here. Okay, I think this is, there's the Haunted Mansion, but. The date is right over here. I believe. Uh, 19, yeah, 1962. And it opened in 55, so. Not too long after opening. But on the bathrooms of Lake Tahoe, back when that was out, back in the 90s, to show my age, they were really concerned about bubonic plague carried by squirrels. Oh, wow. Avoid contact with chipmunks, squirrels, and other wild animals. I didn't know that squirrels and chipmunks carried the plague in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Yeah, look at yeah, these they guys are here. Substantial. This this one standing here, he's probably weighs about 20 pounds, 30 pounds. Really? Yeah. A couple more wax figures and over that here. Is a real Conestoga wagon. It's behind the army of bears. Rudy. <laughs> That's a really big teddy bear there, Rudy. He is. He's from Wanamakers. He was the mascot for them. Then they sold him at Christmas time, and he was kind of the model, and then they sold the miniature ones to the public. So. He was there to get your attention. Rudy the giant bear. All right, now we're gonna hop on a tram. I think we got the tram just for the two of us. Oh, look at this. We got Sasquatch lurking around right here. All right, we're gonna get on one of these trams. These are cool. They're all electric. Charge them overnight. Gotta keep the water in them. One of my favorite things that recently happened is we have all of these uh, soapbox derby racers yeah and one of the people who came in actually rode the purple one when they were a kid in really the 70s. so he brought in his uniform his helmet and his awards because he was cool. an award winner so we're gonna make a big deal out of that but every now and then the collection touches somebody quite personally but everybody can relate to something they'll see here. yeah one day i'd love to go to an actual soapbox star and never actually seen a race in action Got the uh, Tin Woodsman there, and the uh, mayor of the Munchkin City. That says Tour Guide Phineas there. And uh, over here, see Batman having a, having a picnic there on the, uh, on the bat mat there. It's like he's having a lovely time. Yeah, just, I'm just looking in every direction, there's so much going on here look at this guy here all right i guess we gotta we gotta get on the tram absolutely you want a front seat yeah sure i'm riding in front of the tram here so we're starting to enter our world of animatronics animatronics were started back in the 1890s just like a lot of the other experiments with electricity to show people what it could do because back then very few homes would have had it i mean it would have existed yeah. certainly but you'd have to go into the downtown to see it. It was at about the same time they developed mass, or mass production of plate glass windows as well. So they'd have the department store windows, you put these guys in there, and 
on our carousels on the left, you'll see some going. Not all of them are working right now, but you definitely get a strong sense yeah, of it. We've we got Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh yeah, look at this over here. I get Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's remarkable. So we are about 15 minutes from King of Prussia Mall here. Yeah. The largest mall, retail, whatever they, their qualifications are. And back in the 90s, they did a massive renovation. When they did it, a lot of the old signs went away and they wound up here. So as a kid growing up in the area, I loved Gene's Books. It was an independent bookseller. And you come here and it's a connection that you kind of forgot about. Uh, underneath it, we have dogs playing poker. <laughs> Very important Americana art made by a man named Cassius Coolidge. And he made a series of maybe 10 different paintings, dogs playing poker, playing pool, you name it. Anthropomorphic dogs everywhere. Mm -hmm. He also patented the first comic foreground. Yes, I knew this. this yes. The, uh, where you put your face through the, the thing at tourist spots. Yeah, same person. That's one of my favorite facts. The same person that invented the, uh, the, the cutouts, invented the dogs playing poker. He was also a banker, I think a realtor. He was a jack of all trades. There's so much going on. Oh, look at that. Willie Nelson over there. With Bill, Bill Clinton. Clinton. Of course. <laughs> We got oh some Philadelphia gosh. Toboggan Company roller coaster car right here. And oh, wow. some bumper cars. Of course, Philadelphia Toboggan is still in business today, but nowadays they use seat oh, belts and other padding and boring stuff. Oh, yeah, that's like a die. solid wood car with oh, no yeah. restraints. Yeah, you are definitely putting your life in your own hands. It's a cow over here being, being milked. Oh, look at Mickey there. He's the creepy Mickey. <laughs> Some dinosaurs back there. Look at all these animatronics. And then of course, Albert Einstein. We all knew that he was a smart guy, we just didn't know his head was that big. <laughs> and look at this robot here, that's amazing. Oh, I love that. <gasps> yeah, these are pneumatics from a company that was similar to the Chuck E. Cheese fall tubes. I'm sorry, that just sort of jerked me. <laughs> so, we moved ahead a little bit faster than expected. So yeah, these guys are pneumatic. We may one day get them working, but we don't have their faces, so. Look at that, there's one of those. Uh, a lot of times you see this lion as a drinking fountain there. Oh yeah, look at just layers of things here. It's amazing. Polar it's bear the there. Sally Corporation. Sally, the Badland Band. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually been. I've actually been. Uh, did a tour at Sally. Okay. And uh, yeah, they uh, they made animatronics. Uh, they had them in the celebration station for a while. Oh, that's so. That's so cool. And then these are something called typewriters. Typewriter. <laughs> Again, something a lot of kids need to see to I understand. I think that's Ben Franklin hiding back there behind the typewriters. Here's our little zoo animals over here, dominated by the giant hippo and the elephant. An elephant up there. Now, coming up behind the Camp Snoopy sign is Calamity Jane. This is Calamity Jane. You'll see she's got a gun in her holster. She's got boots <laughs> in her boot. You really don't want to make her angry. <laughs> That's amazing. But one of our favorite pieces of technology is this. This is called a Custer chair, and this comes from about 1916. It is one of the first electric or gas-powered wheelchairs ever made. So it sold a lot to the World War I veterans at the oh, time. Oh, that's really neat. And it could go about 30 miles an hour. So you, it wasn't just cake, but if somebody was in your way. Oh, the bell works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so many just strange and different animatronics yeah, those I've never were, seen before. Yeah, teaching kids about Car safety. Oh, okay. I think I may have actually seen this one at one of the state fairs driving around. Okay. The little police car. Yeah, they, they are animatronic that. again or pneumatic. Sort of animal coming out of the barrel there. There's Porky Pig. Here, a 1954 Chevy Corvette is the Hooters side. The Hooters side. And of course, Hooters was developed by six guys who just wanted to get drunk and not get arrested, basically. So. 
They named it Hooters because of their love of owls. They loved owls. They didn't really, I don't know. <laughs> That's just opinion. Oh, look at this little ride vehicle there. Yeah, that might have been like a dark ride vehicle of some sort. So next to the giant Ronald McDonald, we have a Kobe conference bike. It is seven seats. What? One driver. <laughs> What's <the> happening? <laughs> The other six people would just sit around it and... Oh, okay, so one person's driving the bike and the other people are just sitting there talking to the driver? Talking to each other. It's talking like, to each other? It's a conference. It seems like it'd be really distracting for the driver. I would... Well, hopefully the driver's focusing on the road. But. So here, of course, is our very important mermaid. I don't think she's that, aerial, though. Look at that mermaid. Uh-oh, we're gonna gun it here. Well, it might happen, <laughs> hopefully not. So one of my personal favorite things here is the flag of Nebraska on your right. The, back in 2001 or so, the Vexillology Society rated all of the flags in the United States for quality, things like that. Yeah. And they rated Nebraska one of the very ugliest in the country. Nebraska's so. the, this was one of the ugliest flag? Yep. But what makes this one even better is it actually has a typo on it, and I'm trying to inch us forward, and it's just not cooperating right now. There we go. Sorry about the jerking. So, so yeah, it says equality before the law. Oh, it's supposed to say the law? Yep. Oh, that is that. Yeah, that's kind of lousy. You kind of want to spell everything right on your state flag. Yeah, and if you've ever been to Nebraska, I think they depicted all three mountains or big hills that are- Oh yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are about 15 minutes from the town of Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Uh, back in the 30s, the Collegeville Costume Company emerged out of the Collegeville Flag Company. And so Collegeville Costumes made all of these masks. Oh yeah. The famous, amazingly cheap quality masks that kids would use if they- Yeah, I remember these. Didn't have a lot of money. And you'll see some more of them. Of course, we have the Three Stooges here. Well, four of the Three Stooges. About 10 people have been Stooges over the years. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at these, these masks here. And this is a theater backdrop out of Lancaster. The main theater there. But coming up on the right is Mummerabalia. Outfits used by the Philadelphia Mummers during their famous parades on New Year's Day. The Mummers. There's a museum I've not been to, the Mummers Museum. So kind of like a, a Pennsylvania Mardi Gras? Essentially. Would that yeah. be accurate? They use New Year's as an excuse to dress up this way and drink a lot of whatever they want to drink. Well, there's a carousel. And we're coming up on our band organ collection. Now, you saw Nickelodeons on the other side. Those would have been put in hotels. Band organs would have been put at carousels or just in amusement parks. So they're designed to be big and loud and colorful. And Wurlitzer is easily the most famous of the producers of them. But you'll see North Tonawanda musical works, things like that here. And I will put on when coming up. You'll also notice we have our sea serpent guarding the miniature circuses because everybody needs a sea serpent. Go firing up the. Uh Carousel organs here. That dinosaur. So one of the, we have treasures here that we occasionally discover after years of having them. On your right, we have this toy box. And it's always been here, but nobody ever took the initiative to actually see what it did until recently. And it was a very a surprise for us. Oh, hey there. <laughs> Well, hello. Thanks for turning the crank. I'm Mr. KB, and I'd like to sing my KB song for you. Play some KB There's toys. 
special place where we all can go Full of happy faces all aglow Where the children laugh as they run and play It's another KB day KB toys, KB toys Toys for all the girls and boys we have most of our animatronics Oh wow, and, the big uh, clown head up ahead is amazing Oh yeah We've had people here who are genuinely terrified of clowns. Oh, look at that. We try not to warn Coming out of the door. Yeah, this is a little baby oh, goat. Oh, wow. You get up with the bed and pillow fight. And... Oh, look at the raccoons. Or some, yeah, it's like, no, oh, it's like Noah's Ark there with the animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a monkey, a tiger, and a... Oh, oh my gosh, so much going on. Look at these little, what are these? Like, they were space like little bears. space bears. I love the space bears. Oh yeah, Sesame Street characters here. Oh, more organs. Oh my gosh. And yes, you are looking on the right at the largest slinky in the world. That's the largest slinky in the world? It has not been verified by Guinness. However, on your left, this popsicle stick sculpture was verified in 2009 as the largest popsicle stick sculpture on the planet. It was wow. made by one guy from Connecticut. Just look at all this going on right here. And coming up is one of the creepier things I, you'll ever see on my humble opinion. What's the little babies. Look at the little babies. The two in the baskets are selling sweetheart soap. And I don't know what the little guy in the middle is doing there. Oh my gosh. This is like some sort of alternate reality uh, small world ride here. <laughs> Get everything happening here. <laughs> the wizard there looks like it's levitating someone. Yep. And we're coming up on the oldest animatronics in the collection. We believe the Sword Swallower dates also to be about the 1890s, 1900s. 1890s there, the well Sword Swallower. Years old. We've got Instabands up here. And we do actually have some Disney connections. Oh yeah? So, so straight ahead you're going to see some massive band organs. Yeah. The one on the right, the yellowish one, was for many years in the 30s and 40s located in the, a park in Griffith Park at a merry-go-round. Oh yeah. It's called a World Tour Model 165 and uh, a few hundred of them were made but only 11 survive today. Yeah. And this is one of the 11. We actually have three of them here so I'll show you the other two in a few minutes. But this park is where Walt Disney used to take his daughters. Yeah and that's where he would sit and watch them and he said to himself you know I shouldn't be sitting on this bench I should be up there on the carousel playing with them and that helped give him the idea to create the Disney parks so that uh, that 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 is the band that is the band organ yep. that Walt Disney would have been listening to while coming up with the idea for Disneyland that is pretty amazing Tweedle down there Machine. This is a dance hall organ out of Belgium. It's a mortier and it's named the Emperor. The Emperor came to Indiana around the turn of the 20th century for a beer garden. Uh, parts of it were reduced in size. It's about a half the size that it originally was. The family owned it for a number of years. They sold it to a man out of St. Louis named Paul Aikens. Paul had it at his gay 90s village for many years and then he sold it to Walt Disney World. So this was probably somewhere near Main Street okay. when Walt Disney World opened, as was another one. Oh wow, you know, so this is from, this is from, was that Disney World? That's Disney crazy. Disney World ultimately decided they didn't want to deal with it anymore for reasons I don't fully understand, because it's a beautiful Oh, it thing. is. Um, so they sold it to auction. Mammoth. And the Mammoth is a um, band organ, it's a military stuff. band organ. And you'll see that this has a very large pipe section and it is a loud machine, so. It's gonna be loud. So what 
you're looking at on your left, this village, yeah. this comes from Philadelphia. In the 1970s, the Litz Brothers department store was a main go-to place on market. And this was what they had on their top floor for a Christmas celebration. Wow. They had about 17 buildings then. Nine of them have survived and are here with us today. So um, they went through a number of different homes before coming here. Like that elephant. Mm -hmm. We also have miniature Christmas displays that would have been in the department stores. Famously, the first ones that are coming up were from the Macy's in New York, in, yeah, New York City. Which is why we have the Philadelphia backdrop behind it, obviously. One of my favorite Elf features in the there. toy room, or the toy factory, is the dresser has eyes. Oh yeah, I see the dresser room. peeking at us. Oh yeah, they move, they move. There they go. <laughs> Look at the little girl up there in the window. Oh, there's so many of these little Christmas animatronics. Oh, look in the window there. It's cutting the Christmas turkey. Wow. The famous wig shop on your left. The wig shop. All kinds of Santas and Christmas related stuff here. All year round. So if you need your dose of Christmas in January or February, can't quite get over it, here you come anytime of year. And same with Easter. You can always have Easter. And across from Easter, who better than the Simpsons? <laughs> Simpsons, there, a little dancing guy right there. It's the giant Snow White and the Seven Dwarves there. And of course, we have a puppet show hosted by the Puppet show there. So one of the Pirates. things that our collector commissioned from a Lancaster-based artist named Joan Fay were the miniaturized uh, samples of sideshow art. So the different acts that would have performed at a circus sideshow or a freak show were advertised on these kinds of oh, yeah. canvas paintings on your right. Excuse so me. these are very side show banners. they're just much smaller because the originals would have been five feet tall or something crazy like that. games, slot machines, and of course a giant George Washington head on the right. Oh yeah, there's the George Washington head. I think uh, you'll disagree, but any place that's worth its weight in gold has nutcrackers. Oh, yeah, look at so, all those, get all those nutcrackers yeah. there. Yeah, the interesting thing about nutcrackers when you do research is you find out that they were actually originally created to crack nuts, but that became passe, so now the only reason you have them <laughs> is to look at them and enjoy them. 
No, that's the whole thing with me. I, I, I get so mad when you go in the store and they don't even, their mouths don't even work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's the point? But <laughs> nowadays you can get your nuts pre-cracked, pre -cracked, so you don't need them anymore. And here comes that. the other trams, so we'll just wait for them to go. We got by. the other trammers there. Yeah, they got a full tram. Yeah, one of the big challenges is remembering to look up and over when you're going on this because there's so much to see to the right. Oh yeah, just yeah. things hanging in the rafters. You probably missed a thousand things while traveling through here. Just like in our music room, we have miniatures here. On your right, the first display shows a miniature circus from the early days when the circus came to town on the train. The world's largest Gumby, because... The world's largest Gumby? Where's he? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see him back oh, he's, there. he's coming up. <laughs> All four of these trucks are over 100 years old. The one at the end, the really blocky-looking thing, that is a Nash Quad. And they were produced for the World War I fight. First car to have, or first truck to have four-wheel steering, four-wheel brakes, four-wheel drive. And, of course, yeah, we can't overlook Brittany and her... Back. So that's Brittany, Trump, and Ted Kennedy. Ted Kennedy, that's what I thought. Of course it was Ted Kennedy. Oh, it says Brittany right there, yeah. <laughs> well, no, that came later. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they were a part of New Orleans floats. Okay, New Orleans floats. For, yeah, and uh, at first, you know, the order was a little different, but we figure Brittany's probably the least political of the three. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, look what we got coming up here. We yeah, got the, exactly. Uh, that was why I wanted Chuck E. Cheese. Old Chuck E. Cheese band here. I gotta turn it on for you and then we'll let the air collect and then I'll play them for you. Oh, they work? Oh yeah. We actually, they didn't work, but we got a 16 year old who remembered coming here when he was much younger, uh, Ryan, and Ryan's great. He uh, asked if he could come in and work on our Chuckies. We couldn't say no. Oh, there they go. Look at this. Okay, all you rockers. Chuckie's bandstand is back for some of your favorite video hits. Don't worry them, folks. Dad is not with largest Gumby. They were telling me that uh, that this, the world's largest Gumby and the world's largest uh, slinky we saw earlier were an, for an exhibit at the uh, Virginia Museum of History. They did an exhibit on toys. And, uh, let's see here. Who's that, uh, who's that shooting pool there? Is that, uh, I don't know, is that Mark? Yeah, I think that's Mark Twain. Yeah, Mark Twain there shooting some pool. Look at the food stand here. more of these uh got a little wax band the pile of heads there <laughs> so three organs play together wow that's loud <laughs> Oh, 
King Candy from the game Candyland. And apparently <laughs> this giant teddy bear is an animatronic as well, but he's not, not currently operational. Uh, there are some very local signs. We got Ticketmaster, but Oaks Garden was right across the street from us before Wawa came in. So you never know where they come from. Of course, we have a Denny Kit Fox airplane on the right, and that oh, is a real airplane. It's a privately made, so if you trust yourself well enough, you could, could conceivably make your own Denny Kit Fox. It's the Pet Boys there. Yeah. Post cigar, unfortunately. <laughs> 1954 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. Back in the oh, days when you were lucky if your car got about eight miles to the gallon. Wiener man back there? Oh, I just noticed. I've never seen this mascot before. Wiener man. He's with the Oscar Meyer Wiener Mobiles. I don't know if he was a Oscar Meyer mascot at uh, at one point. Oh, oh yeah. So. Precious Moments collection. Should have been to the Precious Moments uh, Cathedral in it, Missouri. Oh, I've been there. It's a strange place. <laughs> it's very unique. <laughs> a couple of wax heads there as well. Thomas Edison, Abraham Lincoln. Eleanor Roosevelt and Douglas Fairbanks. Not who sure who Douglas. Silent film actor. Oh, silent film actor. Okay. Pitt Fair, Pick Fair, him and Mary Pickford. Now that is not the real Statue of Liberty on the right. <laughs> really? Yeah, just like you should know. But we've got some mate tags that I'm sure never needed help to keep them working. I think one of the more important pieces is the scale collection in the back there. You don't get to see that many varieties of scales in one spot too often. And this little fire truck, it is electric, same company that made our tram that we're on. This was used when this was a BF Goodrich factory. So they okay. would drive that around in case there were problems because rubber can be fairly uh, flammable. And they were coming towards the entrance. We've got a 1948 Hudson Commodore on the right. Hudson stands out as the first automotive company to hire a woman into any positions of authority. And um, Molly, oh my gosh, I just blanked on her name, but she uh, created the interiors for the cars. Right next to her, we have a 1908 Sears Roebuck car. You would have purchased this through the catalog. And uh, it's so basic, you can see the chain action there oh, okay. on the side. This is a Ford, late 40s. But at the end, at the end, we have our two Crosleys. And again, the Crosley company did not do great with cars because they were making them fuel efficient and economical at a time when people just didn't care about them. Whose giant head is that? You know, I have not been able to track <laughs> who he is. My expectation is he's from a like a fun a family fun center. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cool. I. He is not familiar to me, and I wish I could tell you ex exactly who he is, but one of the uh, things we used to have people come off the tram and complain about, if complain is the right word, was that they had never seen Howdy Doody on the tour. Yeah. And we did, of course, have Howdy. We put him right here, though, so that they couldn't say it anymore. So. And he's still in his original packaging. Yeah. Peter Pan and uh, Captain Hook there. So we wind to the end of the tour. 25th hour fun house. Yeah, there was a place up in Wilkes-Barre called Buzzies. Buzzies? And they're closed now, and we have a lot of their advertisements and posters and things like that. So if you're in doubt, it in all likelihood came from Buzzies because they just had clowns galore. One might argue too many clowns. <laughs> you never have too many clowns, you right? You never really have too many clowns. <laughs> And of course, we try to keep Alf front and center because oh, there's Alf. Easily the most important alien life form that uh, we've ever had on our planet. 
So we've hopped off the tram. I think we're gonna take a closer look at some of the things. because There's just so much going on. Just couldn't see it all just by uh, flying by in a tram. Yeah, just look at these, all these like interesting animatronics here. This big guy. Bill Clinton there, Willie. See, so yeah, I want to get a look at some of these ride vehicles here, and this yeah, this roller coaster. It's absolutely, uh, absolutely amazing. Again, no restraints. This wooden car. Wow. <laughs> Mickey. some of these animatronics close up. Yeah, it's amazing like running by in the tram, almost like a almost like a dark ride, but really cool to see them close up as well. Yeah, check out these these dragons back here with the wigs on. Yeah, they used to be our rock band, but <laughs> we had I think one of my favorites here is this robot. It's so unique. Oh, look at that. And these were the these were the animatronics from Sally. One of the uh, animatronic bands from the Sally Corporation. Yeah, deep sea diver, possibly, or maybe an astronaut. Yeah, all these different animatronic uh, skeletons here. <laughs> these would have been from the old carnivals going around. And the collector just loves to buy old carnivals and keep what he wants and sells the rest. Yeah, this is a pretty unique carousel. I don't think I've seen one quite like this. Look at this little mini carousel here. Just got the two horses that would rotate. Yeah, a couple smaller carousels in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at this, I guess this is a gorilla here. Look at that. Just sitting oh. there. There's the goats in the bed. Oh, he's smacking, smacking his sister there. Yep. Oh, no. Oh. Whacking his sister. And then. Oh, there, there. there's the mother goat checking in. It's like all these little animatronics, like just like hidden in every nook and cranny. So they're working the uh, the paint roller. Ah, I love this one here. I think it's like Noah's Ark with animals sticking their heads out. And yeah, just a giant glowing clown there is pretty amazing. And the uh, giant Walkman actually does play regular size cassettes. <laughs> This walk we can play regular cassettes. Yep. That's right. Yeah, I love these space these space bears too. <laughs> the monkey there coming out of the barrel. Oh look at those Swiss Army knife displays. Yeah, these babies here are something else. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah, they're saying this was probably the oldest one here, the Sword Swallower. There's the chick, chicken there. Oh, and the little girl's flapping her wings like a chicken. Now 
now with some Wonderland figures. The Tweedledee and Tweedledum. The Queen of Hearts. The Mad Hatter. Let's just look at these, these clouds here. That's like the one from uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure there. Walt Disney World, Oregon. Yeah, these displays are so cool here. The blacksmith shop. <laughs> See the little animals popping out of their logs. Oh, look at that bulldog. So this organ here was also at Disney World. Dancing raccoon. these elves hard at work and yeah look in there the uh, the eyes on the dresser that move the bakery there Look at that snowman back there with the glowing eyes. Yep, isn't he creepy? <laughs> well, there's Santa and Rudolph trying to come out of the chimney at the same time. Yeah, the guy here cutting his uh, cutting his Christmas turkey there. sausage maker there. This is how the sausage is made. Actually, I think those might be candles. Oh, maybe that is sausage. I'm not sure. I vote sausage. Happy little dog there. Wax figures here having a having a drink. I'm getting some beer there out of the fridge. This is the pirate boat here. A few of these are our wax figures. We have this giant shoe here. This is Wedding Central. It's a 
a little bit of advertisement for Wedding Central. And then uh, look at that, the, those big KFC buckets. They look really big when they're, you know, they're up in the sky, they don't look as enormous, but you can see how huge that is. And look what we have here on top of the refrigerator. We actually have the uh, the talking Elvis. I have have one of those in uh, in my bunker as well. <laughs> so. Thank you for joining me here today at the American Treasure Tour Museum, and I'm blown away. I somehow I can't believe I can I can't grasp the fact that somehow I have not made it here until now. This is a very very special place, and um, I don't believe I've seen that many animatronics in one place. The, uh, the tram ride is almost like it's almost like a dark ride, like, like a tour of a dark ride. And I'm so grateful that I got the tour, the chance to to uh, check out some of the animatronics on foot as well. I would definitely, I think this easily fits probably into my top ten favorite locations of all time, one of my top ten favorite attractions, maybe even my top five. This was just truly, truly special. It's just one of those places where there's just always something new around the corner, always something hiding, some, some place where you could come back and, and see something new every single time that you come. So I cannot recommend this enough. The, the American Treasure Tour, this is, this is some major serious fun happening here. So please, if you're in the area, treat yourself to the uh, the American Treasure Tour Museum. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel uh, around the country, I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. We get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and uh, doing personalized messages on Cameo. If you're interested in any of those things, please check the description of this video. And uh, of course, those things help keep this tram on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag. Clark, I wish you were an animatronic. <laughs>